good morning everyone uh, the topic for today's discussion is uh, gingival surgical techniques now what do you understand basically by gingival surgical techniques now <coughs> gingival surgical techniques means uh, any procedure you do to the gingiva by which you are trying to scrape the gingiva or trying to resect the gingiva that is a gingival surgical technique actually now when you do a flap surgery what you are doing is you are reflecting a flap and you are exposing the bone but here in gingival surgical techniques you are not doing anything to the bone you are not reflecting a flap probably in the milder aspect of the gingival surgical techniques you are doing a scraping of the inner lining of the abdominal pocket which is called as skewer attach and when you have an enlarged or asymmetric or <coughs> anesthetic gingiva you do try to reshape the gingiva by a process as gingivectomy so these are the two processes that are involved in gingival surgical techniques and let's go and discuss each of them <coughs> now before that you have to know certain uh, terminologies uh, these are things that probably you will be very familiar with one is cure attach the cure attach as i mentioned before is the scraping of the inner lining of a periodontal pocket you have a gingival sulcus like the sulcular epithelium so this sulcular epithelium will be usually inflamed in case of a periodontal pocket and you are trying to remove all the inflammatory component of that gingival sulcus by means of this procedure called as cure attach scaling as or <clears throat> you all know you probably would have done about 40 scaling and now you, you know what is used by means of certain specified scaling instruments you try to remove all the hard deposits on from the <coughs> from the tooth surface that is called as scaling <coughs> now what is root planing now root planing now what does now if you have a periodontal pocket you have usually calculus and other microbial deposits attached to the root surface by means of scaling you are removing all those deposits okay but the problem is the outermost layer of the root surface is called a cement and when the calculus or microbes get attached to cement the microorganisms that are present in this plot or calculus will produce a lot of virulent factors of substances called as endotoxins which may get adhered into the cement so even after you are removing the deposits by means of scaling you have an outer layer of altered cement now if you have that infected layer of cement probably that will prevent the other tissue that is a gingival epithelium and the gingiva to come and attack the root surface. So what you do is after scaling, take a curette and then smoothen the root surface. By smoothening the root surface, you are doing it very finely. You are removing the outermost layer of the cement, the infected layer of cement. That procedure is known as planing. Okay. <coughs> now when you look at pure attach, now depending upon the extent to which you do pure attach, you can classify as gingival and subgingival pure attach. Now, yeah, just by looking at the next figure here, yeah, this figure you can know that what is gingival and subgingival pure attach. Now, when you extend second. Now, when you extend till this, we we'll call it as this gingival cure attach. You look here, you can see that uh, this is extending to this region. So, so you are scraping only this part of the gingival surface. So, probably epithelium and some part of the connective tissue you are scraping. So, this is called as gingival cure attach. But when you extend your curette far beyond to almost the crest of the alveolar bone, you are removing this whole of this gingival tissues, the whole of this implant tissue. This is called as subgingival cure attach. Okay. Now, 
now you have to come across a term or you should know a term which is called as inadvertent curator. What is inadvertent curator? Now, while doing scaling or group planning, unintentionally you are removing some part of the inner lining of the design surface. Now, this is not intentional. And this unintentional removing or unintentional cure attach is known as inadvertent cure attach. Now, when most of you, uh, what I've seen, uh, when students do is they don't do an inadvertent cure attach. In fact, they remove a lot of gingiva. We can call it as a gingiva community. Right. Now, what is the rationale of doing cure attach? Now, the basic rationale is whenever you have a periodontal bracket on one side, on the two, you have a lot of deposits, hard and soft tissue deposits. While on the other side, that is on the gingival sulcus, you may find a lot of inflammatory component. It will be chronically inflamed. You will have a lot of granulation tissues there. And within this granulation tissues, there will be a lot of microbial dep deposits. You may have dislodged calculus. And all this, what it does is, it can perpetuate or continue the inflammation. So basically, before probably doing a surgery, you want to clear up all the inflammation in relation to the gingiva. So you do a scaling and root training first, and then you do a cure attach by which the hard tissue is also at rest, but the, and then later on the soft tissue is also at rest. So all the inflammation in relation to the tooth is being removed, and all the inflammation in relation to the gingiva is coming to cure attach. So that is a rationale of doing cure attach. But what is the present concept of cure attach? In previous years, I think probably when uh, time when we were doing post graduation, now the, all the cases we were supposed to do cure attach. But now the present concept is you treat the heart tissue, that is, you remove all the deposits in relation to the tooth surface. The soft tissue will automatically be. So there is no need of giving any cure attach. That is, you don't have to scrape the gingival sulcus or gingival line. You remove all the accretions that are present on the root surface, it will completely clean. That's a good point. So there is no need of cure attach present. That is a present concept. That is more about cure attach. What are the different ways in which you can do cure attach? <laughs> now, what are the indications? Which all cases will we do cure attach? Now, one case is one is you know as in some cases you know uh, some areas will be inaccessible. So in such cases you may not be able to do a proper surgery in such areas. In such areas, you do cure attach. And there are certain patients, like uh, medically compromised patients, old patients, may not want to do a extensive flap surgery. In so they like to limit the procedure by just by doing so that the inflammation is being reduced and you can, you can try to control the disease. And then during recall visits, if you find that the gingiva is inflamed, you can do a scaling and along with that. Cure attach. These are the indications for which cure attach is done. So, what is the basic technique? So, basic technique is you know, before any surgical periodontal procedure, the basic procedure you have to do is one is scaling and second is root plane. So, one you have to do scaling first, second you have to do root plane. And you are scraping the inner lining of gingiva here. It's going to be painful to the patient. So you have to first keep local anesthesia. And then you have to select a curate for doing curate action. Now, when you look at uh, Gracie curates, you have Gracie curates from 1 to 14. You have seven sets of curates. And these curates are designed in such a way that that curate is going to be adapted to the tooth surface. OK? But the basic procedure here is you don't want the curate to get adapt to the tooth surface, but you want it to adapt to the tissue surface. So what you do is if you are using a curate to 
you <coughs> root plane, the mesial aspect of a tooth. For cure attach, use the same cure on the distal gingiva. So that is a simple one. Like so 13, 14 cure is usually used on the mesial aspect of the loss. Right? So, and 11, 12 on the distal surface. No. Great. Crazy cura 13 14 is usually asked used in the distal surface of molars. But when you do a cure attach, you're not applying in the distal surface, you're applying the easy surface. So that becomes opposite for the 11 and 12 cura. So you don't adapt to the tooth surface, you adapt to the opposite gingiva. That is a basic. Now what you do, you insert the instrument into the gingival sulcus uh, so that the most apical aspect is being <coughs> adapted to the gingival sulcus and then using a horizontal motion just to that. And the outermost aspect of the pocket is supported on the external surface. Now this is how you do a pure attach. You can see um, You can say, look here, uh, what you can do is this, this is here. Yeah, you adapt, you place the cure at here. And on this aspect, outermost aspect, you place your finger. You, you support it with your finger. And then a horizontal motion is being carried out by which you know, this tissue is being scraped. That is basically how you do a cure attach. Now, subgingival cure attach. Subgingival cure attach is the only thing is you know you have to extend it a little more down, almost to the alveolar bone. Okay, then the same thing. The procedure is the same. You just take it with all motion, remove that tissue, then clean that area well. You may find some more remnants of calculus on the root surface. Again, root clean that area, flush that area, apply with saline. Then you just with your finger you basically press that area. And uh, if you feel that the tissues are spread or it's not coming in close approximately to the root surface, probably you can do a suturing or you can clean. And suturing and pack are optional here. You don't have to do it in all the cases of cure attach. That is optional. So that is a basic procedure for doing a cure attach. Now these are the steps you can see that you engage the most apical aspect, just pull it up. And then you can see that the whole entrance is there. Also. Then with your finger, just adapt it to the tooth surface. Not getting adapted, probably you'll have to do the tooth ring and pack. Okay. <clears throat> now, what are the other techniques? You know, this is the standard basic technique that we used to do. Now, there are other techniques by which you can do. One is known as the INAP or the excisional new attachment technique, which was put forward by Naval Benzo Fox in the US. Then you can use ultrasonics for cure attach, you can use caustic drugs, chemicals for doing cure attach. Nowadays, you can even use uh, laser for doing cure attach by a procedure called as a LANAP, laser assisted new attachment procedure. <clears throat> so, what is INAP or excisional new attachment procedure? As I told you before, it is developed by the US Naval Dental Fox, and it is a definitive. Subgingival cure attach, which is performed using a periodontal knife. Steps are, as I told you before, scaling and root planing has to be completed. Review the patient later, give local anesthesia. Then, what you do is here, you are not just scraping the inner lining of the pocket. What you do is you are using a periodontal knife, or you can use a BP blade and handle it. Number 15 BP blade and handle it. And you put an incision, which is known as internal mevel incision extending from the gingival margin towards the tooth surface and it has to be carried out both in the proximally in the proximally both buccally and lingual <coughs> i'll show you that <coughs> now this is so in the in cure attack what we did was we inserted this cure attack and pulled this tissue out now here you are putting an incision like this you know this inflamed tissue so you put an incision like this in such a way and then what you do is after putting an incision 
you insert your QRN and then take out this issue. So whatever deposits are present on the root surface after that, that, that is being uh, removed, area is being well flushed, and then again to adapt this tissue towards the root surface. If it is not getting adapted properly, you can do a suturing and packing. <coughs> so this is a remove the excess tissue with curate and reclaim all the exposed cementum. And if at all there is any connective kind of tissue that is attached to the root surface, you try to preserve that, approximate the wound edges, and if the wound you passing you, place a super and give a pressing. Now you can use do curatize by means of ultrasound. You curatize only thing is you need specialized tips for that. Now what does the ultrasonic vibration result in? <coughs> ultrasonic vibration will result in disruption of tissue continuity. It will lift up the epithelium. It will dismember the collagen bundles and it will alter the morphological features of the fibroblast material. So these are the four different uh, functions or four different effects of ultrasonic vibrations. And you have different uh, ultrasonic tips of scalers that are available in the market. One is known as a Mohr scaler and the other is a rod shaped ultrasonic. So these are the common instruments that are used. <coughs> Again, drugs can be used. You apply some little bit of drugs into the gingival cycles and this will actually uh, cause sloughing of the tissue and you can remove the gingival tissue. But what is the problem? Can you control that? Can you, can you control the extent of uh, these caustic drugs on the gingival tissue? You can't control it. It is, it, it, it is, it is a problem. I mean, it was used before. And now it is not used. It is a historic concept. And uh, mainly we use sodium sulfide and alkaline sodium hypochlorite. Sodium sulfide and alkaline sulfide hypochlorite, which is known as antiform. And also a few phenols have also been used. So these are the caustic drugs, but it is of historic importance. It is not now used, it is discarded. <coughs> now, how does healing take place after scaling and pure attach? Now, you do scaling or you do pure attach. Immediately within the gingival cycle, there will be complete healing and blood. You can see that you just touch that area and <coughs> do a scaling. <coughs> and you can see that in the tissues, there is dilated capillaries and uh, a lot of PMNs, that is neutrophil, appear shortly in the humid site. And there is low progression of proliferation of granulation tissue. And epithelium starts migrating from the edges of the womb. And epithelization occurs by about the first week, that is two to seven days. And uh, junctional epithelium starts to be formed by the fifth day. And uh, almost you can see that healing takes place by the third week. That is the 21st, by the 21st day, you may find some image of collagen fibers of the there on the tissue. So this is how the, the basic steps of healing. So blood fills up, that converts into granulation tissue. There is an intense inflammatory response that takes place. The epithelium migrates uh, from the edges, the connective tissue fibers starts forming, and you can see some amount of fibers by the <coughs> so this is the first part of uh, gingival surgical techniques that is gingival cure attach. So we'll stop with this and uh, I'll take uh, gingivectomy as a separate class.